Hello everyone, welcome to our lecture, today we will talk about ovarian torsion. In this lecture we will discuss its definition, epidemiology, clinical picture, causes and results, imaging finding ultrasound CT, MRI, treatment and prognosis, differential diagnosis. Definition Ovarian torsion is named an exultorsion or tubo-ovarian torsion, defined as rotation of the ovary and portion of the fallopian tube supplying the vascular pedicle. It is a gynecological emergency and requires urgent surgical intervention to prevent ovarian necrosis. It can be intermittent or sustained and results in venous, arterial and lymphatic stasis. Epidemiology Ovarian torsion occurs mainly in young women. 15 to 30 years, and postmenopausal women. Approximately 20% of the cases occur during pregnancy. Torsion occurs due to two main reasons, 1. Hypermobility of the ovary, less than 50% 2. Adnexal mass, about 50 to 80%, most lesions are dermoid cysts or para-ovarian cysts. Large cystic ovaries undergoing ovarian hyperstimulation are at particular risk, masses between 5 to 10 cm are at most risk. Clinical picture. Mostly present with severe nonspecific lower abdominal and pelvic pain, either intermittent or sustained, nausea, and vomiting. There is an adnexal tenderness. Associated raised white cell count is common. Causes. Torsion of a normal ovary more commonly occurs in young children due to developmental abnormalities such as excessively long fallopian tubes or an absent mesosopinx. In adulthood, causes include both benign and malignant ovarian tumors, polycystic ovaries and adhesions. In early pregnancy, a torsion can occur secondary to a corpus luteal cyst or laxity of the adjacent tissues. Results the result of vascular compromise secondary to ovarian torsion is hemorrhagic infarction and necrosis, which can occur as rapidly as within hours of torsion onset. Imaging Finding 1. The main imaging finding of torsion is ovarian enlargement due to venous-slash-lymphatic engorgement, edema, and hemorrhage. 2. Secondary signs include Free pelvic fluid an underlying ovarian lesion, reduced or absent vascularity, and a twisted dilated tubular structure corresponding to the vascular pedicle. 3. Adnexal torsion is commonly unilateral, with a slight, 3 to 2, right-sided predilection, presumably due to the protective effects of the sigmoid colon on the left side. Ultrasound Ultrasound is the initial imaging modality of choice. Sonographic imaging findings include 1. Enlarged ovary greater than 4 cm. 2. Ovarian edema. 3. Variable echogenicity hypo or hyperechoic. 4. A long-standing infarcted ovary may have complex appearance with cystic or hemorrhagic degeneration. 5. Peripherally displaced follicles with hyperechoic central stroma. 6. Midline ovary position. 7. Free pelvic fluid may be seen in greater than 80% of cases. 8. An underlying ovarian lesion may be seen possible lead point for torsion. 9. Doppler findings in torsion are widely variable. Little or no ovarian venous flow, common sensitivity of 100% and specificity of 97%. Absent arterial flow, a less common, sign of poor prognosis. Absent or reverse diastolic flow. Normal vascularity does not rule out intermittent torsion. Normal Doppler flow can also occasionally be found due to dual supply from both the ovarian and uterine arteries. 10. Whirlpool sign of twisted vascular pedicle. 11. Ovary tenderness to transducer pressure. 12. Follicular ring sign. The follicular ring sign is considered as a characteristic sonographic sign for early diagnosis of ovarian torsion. It is defined as prominent, 1 to 2 millimeters thick, 
hyperechoic margin seen concentrically around the antral follicles of the torsed ovary, which are usually small, 3 to 7 mm, and peripherally displaced. The antral follicles in normal ovaries can sometimes have hyperechoic margins due to acoustic enhancement, but they are fine and not seen all around the follicle. Practical points The ovary should be tender to transducer pressure. Absence of ovarian Doppler flow is highly specific for torsion, but normal Doppler flow does not completely rule out torsion. You must always look for an ovarian mass causing the torsion. Case 1. 25 years female presented with severe lower abdominal pain. This ultrasound case shows many of the typical features of an ovarian torsion. The ovary is distended with absent Doppler flow and some adjacent free fluid. The ovary also contains a 4 cm dermoid cyst with an echogenic Rokotansky nodule, dermoid plug. Around 50% of torsions occur in ovaries which contain a lesion and around 50% of these are dermoid cysts. Case 2. 20 years female presented with right lower abdominal pain, vomiting, started 5 days back, right ovary, grossly odematous. 69 by 38 by 38 millimeters, 68 cc. Small peripherally urinated follicles seen. No venous or arterial flow noted. Left ovary, 10 cc. Multiple small follicles. Preserved vascularity. Uterus is normal. No extra ovarian adnexal mass lesion is noted. No free fluid is noted in pelvis. Case 3. 8 years old female presented by dull ache in right flank pain for 3 days. No other complaints. Ultrasound positive findings, enlarged right ovary, 21 cc, as compared to the left ovary, 3 cc, enlarged right pedicle. Absent flow in right ovary with normal flow in left ovary, fluid in the pelvis with tiny echoes. Case 4. 30 years female presented by severe right abdominal pain following ovarian stimulation for infertility. Ultrasound imaging findings. Massively enlarged right ovary, tilde 1200 milliliters, containing multiple cysts, follicles, with very poor blood flow on color Doppler. The less enlarged left ovary contains multiple large follicles and demonstrates blood flow. Free intraperitoneal fluid around the spleen. Appearances are consistent with hyperstimulated ovaries and torsion of the right causing infarction. CT. Good at ruling out ovarian torsion if a normal ovary slash adnexa is seen on ultrasound. The twisted ovarian pedicle is pathognomonic for ovarian torsion if demonstrated. Torsion appears as a complex adnexal lesion representing a Enlarged ovary greater than 4.0 cm. B. Distended pedicle. C. Possible underlying ovarian lesion. Housefield unit greater than 50 on non contrast CT suggests hemorrhagic necrosis. Lack of enhancement may be seen. Surrounding fat stranding, edema, and free fluid. This case is 50 years female present ed by acute severe right iliac fossa pain. This is a coronal CT image in portal venous phase. Shows a large right adnexal cystic lesion, anteriorly a solid appearing component is a torsed congested pedicle. This represents ovarian torsion. Left ovary not found. Yellow arrow indicates torsed ovarian pedicle. Note the whirl pattern. MRI if torsion is suspected MRI is not the imaging modality of choice. If hemorrhagic infarction is present, signal changes include, D1 thin rim of high signal, methemoglobin, without contrast enhancement. Endometriomas and hemorrhagic corpus luteal cysts are less likely to have a high T1 rim and do not usually involve the entire ovary. T2 can have low signal due to interstitial hemorrhage. This is a sagittal T2 MRI image shows. The left ovary is very large measuring 13 by 6.5 cm, pushing the uterus anteriorly and to the right side. It is hyperintense signal in all signals with multiple small follicles inside. It is surrounded by clear mild amount of fluid collection. 
treatment and prognosis of ovarian torsion. Urgent surgery is required to prevent ovarian necrosis. Sopingoolophorectomy is required in most of cases in which the ovaries are not salvageable. If not removed, the necrotic ovary can become infected and cause an abscess or peritonitis. Surgical untwisting can be performed in the cases of a non-infarcted adnexa. Spontaneous detorsion has also been reported. Mortality resulting from ovarian torsion is rare. Differential diagnosis. For an enlarged edematous ovary plus slash fallopian tube, consider oophoritis, massive ovarian edema, MOO, pelvic inflammatory disease, PID. This is the end of our lecture. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching and goodbye.